So my name is Mark Greenwell, um, and next slide, please. And I've been on a journey. Uh, this one, sorry, hopefully. I've been on a journey since about mid 2015 in terms of the improvement of my house up on the top of Priory Road. It's a 1937 detached brick-built building on Priory Road. Um, I've replaced all the double glazing. I've done an extension. Done. Keep rolling forward, please. Yeah. Um, and then, really, it, it culminated this year. I installed photovoltaic on the garage and a, a battery solution, and I've got solar hot water now. Um, and to put not a fine point on it, I'm basically 95% off grid as of March. Uh, whether I'll be that in the winter, I doubt, but at the moment, it's very effective for me. It, it's, it is a high-end solution. It's not what you should do first. And what I did first was all of the draft proofing and insulation that, that uh, Tony talked about. Um, recently, I've had much smart meters installed, and I'll show you those in a moment. Next, please. And that's my smart electric meter. There'll be bigger pictures in a moment. And a smart gas meter. And as a result of that, uh, one of the EPC guys over from Kintbury came over and I had a, a whole house survey done just recently and I got category A on the house for its energy efficiency which surprised even the guy doing the survey because he thought there was no way a house of 935-36 vintage would get above B under any circumstances. We think it's because of the big investment in solar that we've done, that I've done to make it as energy as efficient as possible. Mark, can you speak up a bit? Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yes, sir. Is it okay for the microphone? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. okay, sorry Francis. So, um, the, the, the reason I'm speaking here today is, is, is smart meters, but I'm, I'm still on a journey. I'm about to put heating controls, thermostats into every room. What a question for you. Sure. When you talk about smart meters, many of us just think about the little one you have sitting on your side in your kitchen, yes. right? But here, you're talking about point of supply meters. Yes. And I would be surprised if I asked the gas or electric board to come and put me a smart meter in a point of supply that would just do it, would they? I will, that's exactly yeah. the point of this conversation. So hold that thought. It's a great question. I will come back to it and I will explain all of that over the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. Okay. But it is a common misconception that people have is what is a smart meter Indeed. and it's exactly what you just described and the, the difference between the display and the meter. So, but I'll, I will go through it in a few minutes. Um, and I am in the process of buying an electric car. Um, I will have a, one of the car show, the show cars at the uh, eco event on the 18th, which will be a car I've borrowed from Cupra. Uh, for the day, just to show you what their current generation of cars are. Next slide, please. So, what are smart meters? Well, they are the next generation of point of supply gas and electric meters. Keep rolling. They take automated readings. You don't have to provide any readings. You don't have to take any manual readings anymore of your gas or electric uh, demand at home. They are connected to your energy supplier, I'm with Eon Next, via a secure, secure data network provided by a, a, a DCC. DCC, a government owned organization. Um, it does not require that you have home internet or Wi Fi. Roll forward. And these are the meters, slightly bigger pictures of the electric meter and the gas meter. Roll forward again. So, and they, are, and they are installed into your existing meter points. They are the smart meters. It isn't, I'll show you the home display in a moment. So, what it does is basically it uses the national BT network, mobile network, as a data network that connects your energy supplier through the DCC to your home hub effectively which is the uh, the electric meter is also a hub and it has a, a, a radio connection into the national networks so once it's installed by your energy supplier it's automated and it, and it just works next slide please yeah there's lots of slides to do this um, 
Yeah. We'll keep rolling forward. I've made it a bit more complicated. So, as you mentioned, yeah, that's what we'll keep going to that as well. This is your in-home display. This is what you what you've seen, and what you may think of as your smart meter. This is actually just a little display unit that sits in your kitchen and shows you what your energy use is. So these smart meters then have given you a better connection with your supplier in terms of your usage, but they're not really doing anything to contribute to your improvement in, in usage within the home. Not in themselves, and I'll come on to that. That's a, a great question. The question is whether it was in itself making you re giving you an energy reduction. No, it doesn't. No. What it does is makes you more energy aware, which is the point that Tony was making in terms of choices that you make about how you use, how you heat your house, how and when you cook, how and when you clean your clothes and so on. It, it's about awareness of energy need rather than necessarily reducing energy demand. Next slide, please. So the, the, the advantage of the in-home display, the little black box, is that it shows you energy, both electricity and gas, in near real time. It takes measurements about every half hour of what energy demand you are currently using. It also is reports, because it's connected to the, the your energy supply like Eon Next, um, it knows what pence per kilowatt hour or pence per therm you're paying for gas. So it can tell you in near real time what you've spent on your home energy needs that day. And this is exactly the point Tony was making earlier, where you, if you have an energy budget that you need to be aware of, you can plan and work around what your demands are of the day, if, and you get an, a, a near real-time report of how much you've used. Question? As I understand it, you can actually set your own budget, can't you, using the smart meter? I've got one and it's got on there budget. I don't know how you set it, but it's got something that says budget on there. So I think you yeah, can I've set your own well. I think you can set your own budget, can't you? That's not a feature I'm aware of, to be oh, honest. That's a really good question. No, no, I, an indicator. I, I, I haven't used indicator. I haven't used it myself. Um, I tend to use the, just the either the display or a substitute for it, which, which we'll come to talk about. Yeah. Um, to see what's going on and what has historically gone on. Now, whether it would actually prevent you going <laughs> above the budget, I don't. I don't think it does. It's only what just it an is. indicator. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What so it, it's, yeah it's just an indicator online. Yeah. So it, it has set the budget for me. How it's done that, I don't know. So it tells me when I've gone over what okay. the budget right. is. It doesn't okay. stop. Sorry. It doesn't stop it happening. But it, it tells me. Yeah. I, I suspect, and I haven't tried the feature on mine, but I suspect it's something you can set through the display yeah, that says X pounds a day yeah. or whatever, yeah. that, that it then monitors again. Yeah, it doesn't so. actively can't, do can't anything can't, yeah. other than yes. keeping track. Yes. But it's but quite likely to be your direct debit divided by 360. <laughs> 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 if, that, if that's well, how you want to budget. Yes, but it will vary a lot by month. And oh, yeah, that's why <laughs> it yeah. may or may not maybe, be useful. Maybe, maybe, but... Um, it's not a feature I've used. I, I will investigate it actually. So thank you for that. So, um, there is, as, as as John had just said, a much more in-depth energy demand um, reporting system called the Bright app, which is free on both Android and iOS. And if you roll forward, it gives a bigger bigger image of it, and it it can tell you pretty much every hour how much energy you're demanding electricity and gas so you can be much more aware of your energy use and tailor your needs and as Tony says turn turn down the thermostat to meet meet your you know, make your budget go further effectively you can even use it to see if your family is using too much gas or <laughs> <laughs> yeah it works outside the house as well I mean it, it works anyway it yeah. works anyway because it's connected to your to your phone these, this is not, these aren't real readings, they're just, uh, they're just uh, the ones from the website. We're, we're the meter, that's fine, that's fine. Yeah. The meters are installed for free by your energy provider. And at the same time, they provide you an in-home display. If you have an in-home display, 
it is likely you already have smart meters. In fact, it's certain you already have smart meters. If, the smart, if it was done a few years ago, you probably have the previous generation of smart meter, which means if you change energy supplier, you will need to get a, a reconnection of the smart meter. The new smart meters, the one I, for example, the one I have, the one John has, are agnostic to, to energy supplier. If you change supplier, the meters will go dumb and you would have to do manual readings until you get it reset and re -adjust. With the new ones, it just happens automatically. <coughs> yes, question, Henry. Mark, you've got any idea when the threshold was for that change over there? Between new and old. Uh, no, John. I I think it probably about two years ago. I'm guessing that's my that would be my guess. So the question was what, what the threshold was for the swap between meter one and meter two. The the technical term is that the old ones were called Smets one, yeah. and the new one is called Smets two, <laughs> and the Smets two, as Mark says, is is agnostic. Good word. It can talk, it in fact talks to the one place and that sends the information to the whatever relevant utility company you're yeah. dealing with. Whereas the other ones were dedicated to the utility. Yeah. So. Question. Yes. How accurate are they? Because I've heard, I've been told that they're not 100% accurate. And second part of the question is have one of these at work and when you get the bill through Eon Next it only gives you your consumption it, you don't get an opening and a closing meter reading so you've got nothing to judge against like when you do a normal reading you know what the opening and closing readings are which gives you your consumption but on our Eon Next bills it just gives you the consumption so I've got no idea. I can't nothing to check against. <laughs> so the well, question is whether how, how accurate the meter reading the meters are and how you monitor consumption. John. Yeah. So um, I've not seen anything that says they're not at all not they're not accurate. I think these are taking the pulses that the meter is generating effectively electronically and reporting it. So it if the meter's broken and is not doing that correctly, then that's possible. But I think in essence, it's 100% accurate. On the second point, the bills I get, which are produced automatically directly from the smart meter data, they have uh, not only what the last uh, month end was, uh, so they have you have that month end from previous month, the new month end, so I get that data, and I get for every day a breakdown of when it was used. I don't print or get that sent to me in, <laughs> in the mail because it'd be quite a thick board of paper. <laughs> but I've got all that data if I want to refer to it. Yeah. So it depends on the energy company, I would suggest. And which Mine's energy? Octopus. Yeah, Octopus. So I'm with you on next, as you can tell. Um, my, when I was on the previous, the dumb meters, I was able to log on and see the energy demand and see my meter. I loaded my meter readings into it. Um, and of course, the, the energy suppliers are required to tell you what your energy consumption has been in each year, mm -hmm. so you can look at your meter, your your energy budget, effectively, how much money you're spending. I used to so, get that from N Power, mm -hmm. but then Eon Next took over the N Power account last July, and I've had problems with them ever since. So, so this is about individual. Um, uh, Providers. My experience with Eon Next is that the online system is, is works okay for me and tells me how much energy I've used every month. And actually, I'm not using any energy and, at all. And if in your own home, if you've got a Smets 2 particularly and you've got this Bright app, you can see what it says you've used that month. It just has that information how many kilowatt hours you've used in that month, that week, that day, that hour. If you go back one page, you can scroll back to the larger image. Yeah. So I've always been a bit reluctant to go for a smart meter because not knowing if it's accurate. No, no, no. It's so fine. I think it's quite trust the accuracy. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, how do you know a, a traditional meter yeah. with the thing spinning round is accurate? <laughs> yes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So the, the, these, these are two pages of the app, and it shows you by, effectively that's by day, but it can, as you see, there's the, sorry, my left arm's a bit stiff. You can see by the hour how much energy, and it does it in, in cost, because it knows, it's informed by the, the, the provider what your daily fixed price is and what your per kilowatt hour price is. So we can calculate it and, and you can form an energy budget and it doesn't save you energy. It makes you aware of the energy that you are using so that you can make lifestyle choices. For example, I am now only washing clothes, running the dishwasher when I'm generating electricity in hours of daylight. Whereas previously, I was running it overnight. And that's crazy, because that's energy that is basically down from the grid. It was now because I've got solar. But you can make the same similar choice as if you are still on the grid, if you have two tariff, for example. There's a comment here later. These meters will work with two tariff meters as well. Not everybody, but most suppliers can work with two tariff meters as well. So, moving on. Installation is free. The cost of the meter, as it has been for meters forever, is in your standing charges. So, you pay 24p a day for gas, you pay 16p a day, whatever it is, for electricity, <coughs> even if you don't use them. And that, that money goes to pay for the meter installation. So, if you don't have one, you're missing out on something you're paying for. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's within everybody's bill, whether you have one or not. Yeah. So, yeah, next book, next cover. They are not, as Sir, as you mentioned earlier, they're not energy saving devices in themselves. They are not a smart thermostat, as we've just discussed in the other presentations. They are not mandatory unless, like me and John, you have solar PV and you want to export ex excess electricity back to the grid, in which case you have to have a smart meter to be able to monitor how much energy you're feeding into the grid. Four P of a unit. Okay. Myth busting. So there are a few myths, as we've just been discussing. Not all homes can have a smart meter. That's just keep scrolling. With the new SMETS 2, it's estimated that 99% of homes can have a smart meter. There are, a, there are a few exceptions. You can't switch supplier. Yes, you can. It's uninterrupted with the modern meter. It's uninterrupted switching. It doesn't go dumb. You just change your supplier and it works itself out there and there. Meters can spy on you. People are worried about data security, okay? They can't. They only record the use of energy by kilowatt firm. And they share the readings to your supplier through the data network, which is a secure data network. They don't have your subscriber information or personal details in it. In fact, if you have a smartphone, who here doesn't have a smartphone? <laughs> The number of applications tracking your presence and everything that you do outweighs your personal privacy and data management compared to this. Anytime. Google, if Google is sending you a, your Google Places this month as to where you've been, that's because it's tracking your location. Yeah. Every yeah. minute of every, every minute. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, as I mentioned, Economy 7, Economy 10 not supported, isn't it? It's not true. So, nearly all suppliers, not, not all suppliers, but nearly all have two tariff meter options. Question. So if you have a, sm a SMETS 1 smart meter, what's the chance of getting your supplier to change that, upgrade it to a SMETS Request. 2? Yeah. Request it. And, yeah, and they'll comply? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. It's in their interest to do so, in fact. Is it, 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 yeah. is and it, just, to, just to add a point on this variable tariff, you know, we've, we've traditionally had economy 7, economy 10 for things like storage heaters and hot water heating and so on. 
what you can have now with a with a Smets two meter or even a Smets one meter of certain types is tariffs that vary every half hour. So as electricity coming out of the grid is low carbon or particularly cheap, you can have a lower tariff. Uh, and I think the only people who are really exploiting this at the moment is Octopus with something called Agile, which may or may not be applicable to some people I appreciate. But the fact is, because the meter knows what tariff you're on, knows what the rates are, um, they can actually bill you on these half hour intervals of what you've used in that interval. So if you've got a cheap half hour and you uh, plug in your electric car and charge it during that period, that's, you know, that's a possibility and you'll get, it, get the electricity a lot cheaper. But without a smart meter, you can't do this sort of stuff, obviously. Next one. So people who rent, the myth is people who rent can't get a smart meter. If you pay the bills as a renter, you can have a smart meter. So it's, it's only in the case that it's all included from the landlord that you, that you as an individual couldn't get a smart meter. However, if that's the case for the landlord, I suspect the landlord is going to want to move to a smart meter. <laughs> because it's efficient for him or her. Smart meters are dangerous is another myth because of um, RFI. Well, as is said for your mobile phone, there is no evidence that there's a health risk posed by the radiation associated with smart meter. It is the same as, as yeah, it's, it's, there's less energy going into here than if you put your phone to your your ear because it's in the cupboard it, the, 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 the meters the electricity meter is in the cupboard and the gas meter is outside your house mostly right moving on yeah so why smart meters from my perspective I wanted to qualify for the smart export guarantee which is I'm exporting electricity back to the grid and, I, and uh, it's mandatory for me to do so but the big message here is, is to become more aware of your energy use. And as I said, I changed how I live at home by looking at my energy demand profile and adjusting how I use the kettle, how I use the washing machine, how I use the dishwasher to even out the load. I don't run the dishwasher and the washing machine at the same time, for example. I try to cook during that. that I, the, when the sun is shining, so that I don't, you know, I use my, my PV rather than the thing. But the smart meter tells me and shows me how much energy I'm using, which I didn't have as visibility before. From an energy supplier perspective, the more knowledge they gain by having these smart meters installed, they can understand the grid demand profile better and they can balance out the generation of energy. Um, and become more efficient where they produce it and supply it. You can, okay. Yeah, there's one. Okay. All right. And from a government perspective, there's obviously a lot of um, emphasis at the moment of moving to a greener, more reliable energy system. And it, it's the, again, it's understanding the demand profile from, from the population of the United Kingdom um, and help us to reduce our, our reliance on import of fossil fuels. And I'm sure we're all aware right now of the challenges that are being faced on coal and gas uh, from Europe. So, what next? If you want a smart meter, and why would you not? Make a phone call, contact your energy supplier. When I phoned Eon Next, I got my smart meters installed within uh, two weeks. They want to do it. You arrange an installation date, it was my choice, and on the day of installation, actually, take a meter reading. The guy who does it, or the lady who comes and does the installation, will make a meter reading for you. However, for your own peace of mind, write down the numbers so that you can um, make sure you're aligned on what you've used up to that date and then what you use forward. In the same way as you would if you were changing any supplier. Are you okay? Yes, thank you. 
So, summary. What are smart meters? Keep going. Yeah. They are the next generation of gas and electric meters. They encourage you to be energy aware. Whatever energy, energy costs in the future, and it's, let's face it, only going to go one way, by being more aware, it prepares you to have your energy budget and manage your choices to meet that budget. From my perspective, to have a smart meter really is to be more, as I've just said, to be more aware of my energy use. And from a supplier perspective, it's to be aware of the, the aggregate use of the entire population. And from a government perspective, to underpin the energy transformation. Coming next, well, make the call, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Why would you not? Yeah. Questions? Have I stunned you off? Stunned you off? <laughs> Francis? Just, just to say, we've got the smart meter now. We've had it for about six months or so. And it's, it's very interesting to see um, what you're using. We're with Good Energy, um, and they, uh, their uh, any energy comes from solar and wind. Um, and um, I think uh, we're getting, every month, we're getting um, an accurate reading of the gas we've used for the previous four weeks and the electricity we've used. Yeah. And we stand in credit at the moment. I can't fault it, really. <laughs> it is a good position to be in. So um, I will say there are the, the in-home displays. They are a little computer. They go wrong. Mine fails probably to, to read about once a week at the minute. It, and Francis's yours failed as well. It simply needs to be turned off and turned back on again. That's just the display. But it, that's the yeah, point. That's it is only the display that's gone wrong. My, my, it turns out my mother over in Swindon has a smart meter and has had for the last three or four years. She stopped looking at it because the, the, the display froze. And she thought that the metering had all gone wrong. But no, the meters were working. It's the display unit that needed to be restarted. Mm -hmm. That's the only foible that I've found in the system so far. But when, when I had my smart meter fitted, the guy who set up the display, he said, and that's using electricity, so if you want to save electricity, you can turn it off. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tiny amount of electricity, so if you're, that, if you're really worried about the amount of electricity you're using on, in, on circuits, there are some really great products that you can Actually, there's individual plug products that you can plug in that will tell you how much electricity you're drawing um, to, to run your uh, kettle, for example. Although, actually, the smart meter in home display will show you that, you, that the you. kettle runs three kilowatts. <laughs> and you can see the meter come up when you yep. turn the kettle you know, so And it encourages you to boil only one cup of water at a time to minimize or appropriate number of cups. Yep. Um, I have, I've now got a, an espresso coffee machine because it makes one cup of hot water. So it minimizes just, the energy. Need. Sorry, John. Yeah, just to answer the question that was asked earlier. Uh, apparently, from March 2019, suppliers were only allowed to install Smith 2. So, if it's after March 2019, it's definitely should definitely be Smith 2. But I would say, if you have a Smith 1, and talk to your supplier, encourage them to put a new yeah. system in. Um, because it, for them it's much more flexible it, 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 to get meter readings than the old system and it encourages the market going forward. Yeah. Um, I think that was the last slide we've seen. No, that's just, uh, that's, that's the thank you side. Yeah, so, so, oh, oh, <laughs> <gone>. oh <laughs> Amateurs, eh? Um, <laughs> yeah, so thank you, John. I'll sort that out in a moment. Um, any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Don't have a smart meter. I remember reading at one point that if the two meters were too far apart, then you could have a signal, a problem with the signal getting to the hub. My meters are on opposite sides of the house. What sort of limitations are we seeing in terms of the number of brick walls that the signal can go through? I, I don't know. I mean, that would be up to them to do the survey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But right. yes, you're right. The 
the I don't know whether I th usually I think it's the electricity meter it's, is yeah. the sort of master, yeah. and the other the other part of the gas meter talks to that, yeah. and that, that sends the stuff away. So yeah, the, that's quite important. Do you, do you have problems with Wi-Fi across the house? Well. <laughs> We've got a Wi-Fi extender in the kitchen, okay, which is that, where the gas meter okay. is. That, yeah. that suggests that may well be for you yeah. something they would have to that, check right. in yeah. the survey. Right. Yeah. Surely if you can get a phone signal in where the meter is and where the display is, then well, you've got a connection. Theory, this, is a, yeah. this is not really a phone signal between the two bits. It's, it's, a, mm. it's more of a local network. So Yeah, it, it, between the hub and the gas meter, it is a, it's its own 2.4 gig. Uh, Wi-Fi network separate from your home Wi-Fi. This is why you don't need a home Wi-Fi for it. But if you have an extender, in the same way, it's like I, I have an extender upstairs, but my meters are yeah. three feet apart. I suspect, yeah, in the survey, they should that you should check that. Speak to the system. supplier and speak yeah. to the yeah. surveyors. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Yes. So do we come and do a survey every time? Um, for me, actually, the process was I phoned them up and they and, agree, and we agreed an installation date and they came and did. So I think if, if you are worried about coverage, is to mention it when you talk to them and they would then try to arrange to ensure that the system they install would give you connection between the two meters. Yeah, we, we, our oil, so we don't have gas. So. <laughs> oh, right, okay. Um, oh, well, if you only got electricity. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah. you only got electricity, yeah. then you the quit it. Then, yeah. then apart from the fact you're paying a lot for oil at the minute, yeah. we're <laughs> so feel sorry for you. Um, but yeah, no, if you're only on electricity, then they can do a single meter, just electricity meter, and that will connect to the, to the BT network. So be fine. I think it helps at all. When I had my smart meter put in, my energy supply which is bulbs, gave me a kind of a meterage of how far apart the okay, minimum cool. the two okay. the two meters should be. Yeah. Um, I think mine was kind of rather on the borderline of it and they came and installed it anyway and the chap that was installing it said yes it's fine I checked it it will so, it will be okay with so that, really that distance. Thank yes. you for that it's good knowledge because yes. that's what it is. It sounds that like if you have a conversation with them and they'll yeah. they know how to react. That's the thing. And actually, to be honest, you talk to your supplier and they don't understand the question. Then, then <laughs> 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 go somewhere else. Yeah, then yeah. go somewhere else. Yes, absolutely. Other questions, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. There are a couple of the